this is what a political party must do. Mm-hmm. They should not engage themselves uh, into issues that are not relevant. And if you look at uh, uh, the political party themselves, must also uh, refrain themselves from suspicion and mistrust. You understand? When there's uh, suspicion and mistrust within their ranks, then every little thing that the opponent does, mm, it can also spark into violence. Supposing uh, I place my posters on a part- on a wall, and I go to see that it has been uh, defaced. You understand? If it is defaced or tear off, since I have that suspicion that this is my opponent, he is likely to do that. Mm? Yeah, the suspicion can also degenerate into conflict because if party A is someone who I see to be a very strong competitor in, in our gun, in, in our political terrain, we know, we know major political parties who are always changing the baton. You understand? So if I go, if one goes to see his uh, his uh, poster, we automatically say it is the other. So this is the mistrust and the suspicion that I was talking about. If there's that mistrust and suspicion, it, is also, it also has the potential to bring about conflict. You understand? Then if you look at uh, uh, the civil society, if when you talk of civil society, there are institutions that are not governmental. The churches, the NGOs, and, and the like. They are not uh, governmental. They are, that's what they are called civil society. They are also supposed to play their role. If they, are, if they play their role very well, by their role I mean they should be ready to call the political parties into order. You understand? Since they are not governmental, they don't belong to any political party, they don't belong to any institution, they will be bold enough and they will be that uh, courageous enough to call the parties into order. If, let's say, the two of them are fighting and they come in. Since I've already mentioned that churches are civil society, yeah. you know, Ghanaians will revere our religious leaders. By religious leader, I mean the both the Muslims and the Christians and whatever. If we are doing something, they can't meet. Mm-hmm. We'll be prepared to, I mean, uh, cease fire. So we also uh, would like to employ our civil society organizations to to come in to call our political leaders to order when they are going beyond bounds. So this is what they can contribute to ensure free and fair or peaceful elections in our country. You understand? They should be bold enough to say, uh, party O or party B, what you are doing is wrong. You understand? Uh-huh. They shouldn't try to also, they shouldn't try to be partial. They shouldn't try to be partial, they should be impartial. Mm? Whoever uh, crosses the line, they should be bold enough to say, oh, uh, this one, you have crossed the line, you should have been this, you should have been that. You understand? Uh-huh. Then, when we come to uh, the political party themselves, they should also be prepared to call their, their, their members into order. Their, so sometimes their members falter, but because they feel they are their members, they do not uh, reprimand them. So, if members of political parties can be bold enough to say, oh, this is our member, and uh, what you said against your opponent is wrong. And if they, they try to uh, name and shame people who will, be, uh, uh, will, will go contrary to the electoral laws, despite no matter what, if they are their members, they should be ready to uh, reprimand them. If they do that, then uh, they will be setting the pace for people within their ranks to, 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 to make sure that uh, they, they adhere to the the electoral laws, and they don't go outside uh, the, pol- the code of conduct of political parties. You know, the political parties have signed a code of conduct. That code of conduct means that this is how we should behave. We should not do this, we should not do that. You understand? So if their members go contrary to the code of conduct, they should be prepared, they should be bold enough to call them to order. If they do that, then it means that, hey, they themselves will say, hey, what, what I did, my my party did not show me, but they came out boldly to condemn me. You understand? So that if they, they see that the leaders of their parties are condemning them, mm, then they know that uh, 
uh, no one is there to be protected. And that's what we need. Uh, our lesson will be peaceful because uh, if uh, you do something wrong and your father comes wrong, comes around to say that, oh, my son, what you did was wrong, then you know that in future, if you do the same thing, your father will not be prepared to ask to shield you. So, by so doing, you see that our elections or the conduct or the, the, our electionary campaign in the run up to the election will be peaceful and even beyond, beyond the elections. You understand? There is another way that can also bring about a peaceful election. You see, sometimes after elections, uh, winners try to over jubilate, and by so doing, they try to what? Uh, tease the losers. So, we would like to tell our political parties that uh, they should mod uh, jubilate in moderation. They shouldn't jubilate to uh, tease their opponent. If they do that, no. And when they tease you, sometimes you also <laughs> try to. <laughs> so these are some of the things that uh, can bring about uh, uh, violence in our country in a, in a run-up to the election. If we all adhere to all what I've mentioned, then uh, then the media also play a very critical role. Mm -hmm. You see, we have come to a point in our history that uh, whatever the media say, we try to swallow it as if it is the gospel's truth. But it's not all what the media say is right. It's not always that they, they say the right thing. Sometimes they also falter. So I uh, also appeal to uh, managers of media, or media organization to be uh, circumspect in their reportage. You understand? They should be very careful. Maybe the word circumspect, circumspect is... Uh, it simply means they should be careful in their report, reportage. They should make sure that they research and get the right information. Mm -hmm. They should not uh, write to inflame passions. According to the Brong Ahafu Regional Police Commander, this UOP Ayalingu. To ensure peaceful election requires that the people become vigilant and avoid double registration and double voting. Hello, my name is Stabon Mester and I'm from Belgium. I have been asked how to ensure peaceful elections. Well, I think um, an independent free media is the key to peaceful elections all around the world. If every citizen can freely check the TV, radio or most importantly the internet to follow the campaign and the voting, um, then nobody has the legitimacy to um, declare the elections as false or, yeah. I'm going to have a challenge for if an elected or a potential voter comes around to register. And then there is a question mark on that person, whether the person is long than here or the person is below 18. And then you want to challenge the status of that person. There is a form for you to fill. After filling that form, there will be a committee that will call those parties, those who is uh, the one challenging uh, the potential voter. Then they will sit on the committee. Then you will produce evidence to prove that that person is not a Ghanaian or is below 18. So you don't need to go and attack that person or instruct the electoral officer to stop registering that person. And you have to allow that person to go in. Then they will attach a copy of the challenge form to his uh, uh, registration form. Then they will give it to the electoral commission committee to sit on it. Yes, of course. Even if it's your bedroom, you need a policeman or you need a security at your